This video is going to summarize uh, the videos I have in the playlist on the evolution of uh, carnivorous mammals. And obviously, if um, this is a quick overview, so if there's any topic which is of interest, the individual uh, movies go through these in greater details. Um, so today, uh, if uh, you observe a carnivorous mammal, um, they're most likely related. So cats, dogs, bears, and then you know, the smaller ones like, you know, uh, raccoons, weasels, wolverines, um, et cetera, they're related. They are put in the biological order carnivora. Um, so most mammals, uh, which are large significant uh, carnivores, uh, are uh, descended from a common ancestor in the not uh, too uh, distant past. When the age of mammals began, that was not the case. Dinosaurs had been the primary carnivor carnivores on Earth. And so once they suddenly disappeared, um, birds briefly uh, took over some of that role, as did some of the marsupials. And so there were uh, marsupial um, uh, predators, which were bear-sized, coyote-sized. Uh, some even resembled uh, uh, um, saber-toothed cats. Uh, there still is a Tasmanian uh, devil in Australia. And until recently, there was a Tasmanian wolf. That was the largest marsupial uh, predator uh, which uh, existed uh, recently. Um, but that became extinct in the continent of Australia uh, when humans and uh, placental mammals, including uh, the dingo, arrived in Australia, and then shortly afterwards, uh, it was finally uh, extinguished from uh, the island of Tasmania off the coast of uh, Australia. Um, and so while uh, marsupials could produce large uh, predators, they are no longer uh, significant predators um, uh, uh, today. Um, and the same with the, the giant uh, terror birds. Uh, there was a group of hoofed animals known as the Mesonychians. So uh, while most of the descendants of the condylarths of the Paleocene became plant eaters, the earliest members of this group had not yet specialized to eating plants. And so some of them became uh, predators at a time where there weren't really that uh, many other mammalian predators. So they occupied a niche uh, briefly in the first half of the Cenozoic era. There were small Mesonychians, there were large ones. I mean, some had skulls which were three feet long. So that, that's larger than um, a, a modern uh, carnivorous uh, mammals. Uh, once again, these uh, may have looked wolf-like or bear-like uh, in general, um, but they were not relatives of wolves or bears, uh, but rather they were descendants of condylarths and thus more closely related to herbivorous uh, animals alive today, like uh, cows uh, and pigs um, than, uh, than to any of the true court carnivores of the order carnivora. There was another group of carnivorous mammals which evolved early in uh, the Cenozoic, which were called the creodonts. They are probably cousins of the order Carnivora, different from the Mesonychians and the marsupials, which would be, you know, essentially unrelated other than the fact that they are mammals. So creodonts are probably um, cousins. And once again, uh, in the early Cenozoic era, starting um, shortly after the dinosaurs became extinct, um, there were no cats or dogs or bears. And so the creodonts are an early group of uh, mammals uh, which uh, begin to um, spread from apparently where they are, arose in North America and in the, in the Paleocene epoch. And then in uh, the Eocene, uh, they were dominant predators, predators throughout uh, many um, uh, uh, continents in uh, the old world. Uh, they declined uh, in the Oligocene, that was around the time that the cats, dogs, and bears were uh, taking off, and then they became extinct by the end of the Miocene. Um, some were small and weasel size, some were um, uh, wolf size, and so here is a group of extinct uh, mammals uh, uh, which were carnivorous, but not it, within the order carnivora. They were a related uh, group called the creodonts. Uh, why they became uh, extinct isn't known. Um, 
but it seems as if their brain size to body size ratio was not increasing at the same rate uh, in some other mammal uh, groups. And so perhaps that was one of the, um, uh, of the factors. Uh, and so creodonts were a diverse group of mammalian uh, predators. Here is one family uh, of them. The hyenodonts, uh, is, uh, these are a second family, and some of these were absolutely uh, enormous, uh, you know, the size of rhinos. Um, interestingly, one of the differences is while they had adapted their teeth for eating meat, um, the uh, teeth which uh, could shear uh, uh, meat were in different positions than what we see in the uh, order carnivora, the cats, dogs, and bears. And perhaps that was uh, another reason why they were not uh, quite as uh, adapted as uh, the group that would replace them. So what's called the carnassial teeth. These are the teeth which are specialized to shear uh, meat. And um, the uh, creodonts, um, they were in, uh, like I said, a different a position than is the case in modern uh, carnivores. Uh, hyenodonts um, uh, uh, were uh, distributed throughout most of uh, the Cenozoic uh, era, and once again, they could be uh, rhino-sized um, uh, predators, uh, and, and, and they also then had some very small uh, forms as, um, as well. And so while today's uh, carnivorous mammals are all related. Um, the Cenozoic era had a number of, of diverse groups which were unrelated, which took that uh, role. Many of these other groups were dominant in the early Cenozoic uh, era, which then begs the question, where did our modern carnivores come from? Well, before there were carnivores, the order carnivora, there were relatives which are called carnivoromorphs or a group carnivoromorpha. So these had some, but not all of the features of modern carnivores and are not in the same order as carnivores, but they include the ancestors of modern uh, carnivores. Um, they tended to be smaller, more elongated. And so if you were to imagine, you know, a mink or an otter, as I have in the background in one of these, uh, uh, videos. Uh, minks and otters are carnivores, so they aren't this group, but their body shape is perhaps uh, similar. So if you're trying to imagine, um, there's a mink in the background here. So if you're trying to imagine what these early members uh, might have looked like, uh, you know, that's a good uh, approximation, uh, uh, this uh, mink. From these carnivora morphs, which evolve, you know, starting in the Paleocene, when the um, uh, uh, when the Cenozoic era begins, uh, then there uh, are, let me, let me interpret, let me just get, oh, no. um, then uh, there evolved the true members of the order carnivora. From the beginning, uh, it seems like it, the first carnivores very quickly broke into two um, suborders, uh, kind of the dog and bear half, the suborder Caniformia, and the cat um, uh, half with its relatives like hyenas, mongoose, uh, civets, meerkats, and others, um, the suborder Filiformia. Uh, there are anatomical differences between them. Uh, one of the differences is how many bones compose the casing for the uh, middle ear. Not that, you know, that's overly important, but just if you were to find um, a fossil or a modern animal, and you were wondering, you know, which half of the uh, carnivore order does it belong to? There are anatomical uh, features which um, which you could use, and so Caniformia includes uh, bears, includes uh, raccoons, uh, includes uh, the uh, dogs in family Canidae, uh, but then also includes um, minks. Um, uh, wolverines, and um, then there were even some extinct groups no longer with us. There were bear dogs and there were dog bears. The bear dogs were uh, a family. The dog bears were considered a, a subfamily of, uh, of bears. Uh, and so uh, 
uh, they had some of the features of both dogs and uh, bears, and they could vary a great deal in size. So, for example, the bear dogs uh, could uh, be two kilograms uh, or could be uh, 700 uh, kilograms. So, the dog half of the order Carnivora uh, includes diverse animals alive uh, today, uh, including this. Um, this red panda uh, and the skunk, uh, and then uh, a number of uh, then extinct uh, groups as uh, well. One of the interesting um, groups to come from uh, Caniformia uh, are uh, relatives of bears, which got better adapted for life in uh, aquatic environments. This would include uh, walruses, uh, seals, uh, and sea lions. And so these are carnivorous, they eat fish, but they're actually in the order carnivora and are um, uh, relatives of bears. Here's the main wolf uh, from South America. And so uh, Caniformia includes uh, these uh, members, the earliest members of the uh, seal and walrus group uh, were transitional forms, which had some, but not all of the features, uh, which uh, the later, uh, members uh, would uh, have. Right. So um, these are carnivorous mammals feeding primarily on fish. Obviously they've adapted their limbs for aquatic locomotion, um, but they are uh, relatives of, uh, of bears. Now before I go into the, the cat half, I'd just like to consider both dogs and, and bears because this is just, you know, this could apply to any group, but I think it's the perfect opportunity to just consider how our way of classifying animals then reflects their ancestry. So it's more than just a series of groupings, it's also then predictive of, um, of, his, of history and their ancestry. So for example, um, uh, we put uh, animals into groups uh, which includes a genus and a species name. So the genus name is first, has a capital. So Ursus is a the the a bear genus, and Etruscus was a uh, species. And from Ursus Etruscus, um, we then have the evolution of a brown bear, uh, Ursus arctos. And we think that uh, it started in Asia and then spread throughout the world. And now there are a variety of subspecies, which would include, you know, the Alaskan brown bear, um, the uh, grizzly bear, uh, and uh, others. And so members of a species, Ursus arctos, are more closely related to each other um, than they are to any other species, uh, Ursus. Uh, and so uh, by putting uh, uh, subspecies in one single species, one is stating that they share a common ancestry with uh, each uh, other. And so subspecies, uh, they share a common ancestor, the first members of the species. Um, but then we can uh, then see that some species are more closely related to others, while they are a, a different um, uh, species. Nevertheless, uh, brown bears and polar bears can actually interbreed. And one can observe in wild populations that this interbreeding actually does lead to uh, brown bear genes in some uh, uh, polar bears. And so while they are different species, we can see that they have shared a common ancestor. And so the uh, bear genus Ursus would go back further in time and all bears uh, which have the genus name Ursus, whether it be black bears, brown bears, uh, polar bears, uh, they are related, have been descended from the first members of the genus Ursus. Um, but it's a branching family tree and some branches are more closely related uh, than others. So for example, polar bears and um, and brown bears would be more closely related uh, to each other than either is uh, to black bears. Notice that while the species uh, for Ursus arctos was more recent, you know, in the past uh, two million years, uh, the genus Ursus goes back, you know, a little earlier, say to uh, say five um, uh, to six uh, million uh, years uh, ago. And so as we get to bigger and bigger taxon on the groups, we're going further and further back in time. The members of the same species, they share a common ancestor more recently than members of the genus uh, Ursus. 
but then there are other bears which are not in the genus uh, Ursus. And so therefore we can create other groups. We can create um, subfamilies. So there's the subfamily Ursinae uh, with all the, uh, the bears uh, uh, in uh, one group, um, but then there's a subfamily of short-faced bears, uh, the Tremarctinae. Um, these include some uh, which are alive uh, uh, today, um, but then um, also some enormous uh, fossil uh, species like Arctotus from North America, and then the even larger uh, form which made it to uh, South America when the Americas uh, fused, arguably, you know, perhaps uh, the largest uh, predatory uh, mammal, uh, Arctotherium. Um, and so here's uh, the spectacled uh, bear, the modern short-faced bear. And so just uh, there are uh, different groups, and while some bears are in the family Ursinae, some are in the family of short-faced bears, uh, Tremarctinae. Uh, the panda bears would be yet another subfamily. And so then the family Ursidae, which is a bigger group, the family is bigger than the subfamily, which is bigger than the genus, which is bigger than the species. Every time you go to one of those bigger um, uh, groups, uh, then um, you're going further back in time. And so the classification which biologists uh, used uh, is reflecting their evolutionary uh, ancestry. And, and so once again, members of the same species, a relatively recent common ancestor as we go uh, into the, um, uh, uh, you know, into those uh, larger groups, we get to, to bigger and bigger families until uh, we get to uh, the uh, ancestors of all bears, which would have been uh, the uh, the family uh, Ursidae, right? And so uh, the very first bears then uh, produced uh, the ancestors of the um, of the different subfamilies of bears. So one branch of the family tree would lead to pandas. One branch of the family tree uh, would lead to uh, the short-faced bears, including some giant fossil forms. Um, and then one branch of the family tree would lead to the uh, subfamily Ursinae, uh, which includes uh, giant uh, uh, cave bears. Um, and so when we classify life, once again, it reflects their evolutionary uh, ancestry. Uh, and you know, all have uh, descended uh, from the first bears, which were uh, small, you know, maybe only 20 pounds or so, uh, living in uh, trees um, uh, uh, from uh, a little more than 20 million years ago. And that, those same principles we see in other uh, groups as well. So when we think of dogs, uh, domestic dogs are a subspecies of uh, the uh, gray uh, wolf. And so Canis lupus uh, is the uh, genus Canis lupus is for the gray wolf, but the domestic dog is considered to be a subspecies. And it is, you know, in the range of thousands uh, of uh, years uh, that the subspecies, uh, including uh, the dingo, um, of domestic dogs have descended from uh, wolves. Uh, Canis lupus, the first wolves, go a little further back uh, in history. And so um, uh, the species is a little, a little older than the subspecies. There are some exceptions to that since, you know, uh, modern dogs can still interbreed uh, with uh, wolves, but in general. Um, so it was from these other Canis uh, species, uh, which uh, lived more uh, almost a million years ago, uh, that the first uh, members of the genus uh, Canis uh, lupus occur. And so uh, domestic dogs are a subspecies uh, of the uh, wolf uh, species. And then if we were to go further back in history, then um, the genus Canis uh, would not only include the ancestors of uh, the wolf, um, but other members of the, the genus uh, Canis, such as coyotes, which is the uh, genus uh, Latrans. Um, and so once again, as we get into bigger groups, uh, their common an ancestors occur further back in history. Uh, once again, the uh, uh, the genus Canis is older than the species uh, Canis uh, lupus. Now, instead of around one million years uh, ago, now uh, 
uh, we're uh, further back uh, in history for when uh, there was the first uh, members of the genus Canis. Um, uh, African wild dogs, uh, some have classified in the genus Canis, now they're considered a different genus, but they are the, uh, the closest dog uh, relatives of um, uh, uh, to uh, the genus uh, Canis. And then just as we saw in bears, then we can go to um, uh, the subfamily um, uh, uh, Caninae, um, but we can also create other taxonomic groups. So for example, uh, here we'll use the term tribe. And then so we can create you know, a, a set of different um, taxonomic groups. So um, the species which are most closely related to Canis is put into uh, the tribe uh, Canini, all right? Um, but then there are uh, other uh, uh, tribes uh, as, uh, as well, all right? And so um, here uh, uh, you can uh, see that uh, we have uh, a red uh, fox uh, uh, group uh, and a gray fox uh, group. Uh, the gray foxes are the most distantly remembered uh, uh, related to the other members of the subfamily uh, Caninae. And so once again, we could classify dogs into a nested hierarchy of, um, uh, of uh, related groups. And the bigger the group, the farther back in time uh, we go. Uh, and there are some fossil groups of dogs as well. And so if we were uh, interested, we could uh, you know, put them in the hierarchy uh, as uh, as well. So, out of all of you know the dogs in family Canidae, it would be the gray foxes, uh, which would be the least closely related to the others. Um, we can see that in their teeth, which are a little more omnivorous. We see it in some of their behaviors, like some of them still you know can climb trees to a, a various um, uh, uh, degrees. Uh, you know, so here. Uh, we can, uh, you know, see their carnassial teeth, but also see that they uh, are not quite as specialized for eating meat as we see in some of the um, uh, the members of uh, Canis, et cetera. Uh, and so, once again, as we go further for, uh, further back in uh, time, um, uh, we we uh, see uh, the ancestors of bigger and bigger uh, groups, uh, including the ancestors of the very first members of Canidae. So there have not always been bears, there have not always been dogs, and there have not always been carnivores. So it was after the dinosaurs became extinct in the, um, uh, uh, when uh, the Cretaceous period came to an end at the uh, Mesozoic, uh, that uh, we got uh, the first carnivores, and then the ancestors of uh, the uh, family uh, Canidae, which are alive uh, today, and, and so we can trace their family tree uh, solely producing uh, the groups um, in um, uh, which are alive in uh, the modern uh, world. Okay, so um, there was a suborder which includes dogs, uh, bears, and their relatives. The other suborder of the family. Um, uh, Carnivora is uh, the suborder Filiformia, uh, uh, which once again, the first carnivores very quickly uh, diversified into two uh, lineages. Uh, now, cats are obviously in the uh, suborder Filiformia, but so are hyenas, civets, meerkats, and a number of other groups. And once again, the housing of the, uh, the middle ear is one of the determining uh, factors. Um, and their evolution is, uh, is varied. Um, and so one can uh, see that, you know, mongoose tend to be rather small, but on the island of Madagascar, without other, uh, competition from other, um, uh, with, from other carnivores, uh, they have uh, been able to um, evolve to uh, become uh, dominant uh, predators uh, uh, and, and cat-like uh, based on um, the lack of you know, competition from other groups. And so, you know, uh, the, uh, the groups which uh, they have evolved into depends on you know, where they existed in the world and how isolated uh, they were, uh, et cetera. And so uh, Filiformia produced, uh, uh, produced a number of groups, including some which are extinct. 
There were Nimravid cats, a great diversity of cats which um, predate the Felid cats. So the first cats were not the kind alive today, but a diversity of these Nimravid cats, um, and then even another family of uh, saber uh, tooth um, uh, uh, cats, which are extinct today and not related to the saber tooths, which would come. Uh, later. So the suborder Feliformia um, breaks into a number of separate uh, families found throughout the world. Um, obviously, the one which is known best is uh, the family Felidae. And this family then can be split into subfamilies. So once again, so there's the order Carnivora, um, uh, which then can be broken into suborders, and the suborders can be broken into separate families, including uh, the family uh, Felidae. Uh, but as I said, there uh, uh, were other uh, groups, including some which uh, went extinct. And so the Nimravid cats included very small cats, large cats, saber-toothed cats, but they are unrelated to uh, modern cats, and they are extinct today. In the uh, family Felidae, there were three uh, subfamilies, two of which are alive today and one of which is uh, extinct. And so uh, the ma uh, Machaerontidae, uh, these are the saber tooth um, uh, uh, cats. The, um, uh, now, not all of them had the, uh, the elongated uh, canines, which uh, uh, mark uh, saber tooths, um, and it turns out that uh, lengthening the canines evolved multiple uh, uh, times. So some members of the sub family had only uh, moderately enlarged uh, canines, uh, while um, uh, others uh, to a much uh, greater uh, degree. And so you can see in you know some of the earliest uh, members of this uh, sub family, uh, the canines were not as uh, enlarged as they would be. Uh, later. And so uh, these were um, dominant predators. Um, it's thought that they uh, probably hunted in packs and ripped out uh, the throat as members uh, of the group held them down uh, because these canines, while uh, long and threatening, uh, would also have been a bit more fragile and more likely to, uh, to break. So they would have been effective at, you know, biting you know, an animal if that was the windpipe, the esophagus, and the blood flow to the brain, um, but uh, uh, probably would have needed uh, members of the group to help uh, subdue uh, prey so that uh, the underside of the throat would have been uh, available. So that is an extinct member of the, um, of the cat family, uh, Felidae. Uh, and then there are two living subfamilies. One includes uh, the uh, uh, Pantherinae, the lions, uh, the tigers, uh, the leopards, and then some extinct uh, forms. And so there was an American uh, lion, there was a European uh, jaguar. Um, and so uh, our uh, subfamily Pantherinae, uh, this is one of the three subfamilies of the uh, uh, of uh, cats. And once again, uh, we see a nested hierarchy, a branching family tree with some of these being more closely related than others. And as we go further, further uh, uh, back in uh, time, notice that the members of the genus Panthera um, have uh, their common ancestor uh, more, um, uh, more recently than uh, the clouded leopard, uh, uh, which has uh, the genus uh, Neophilus. So uh, some panthers are less closely related to each other. And then others. And then the same would apl uh, uh, apply to the subfamily uh, Felinae, uh, where uh, as we go uh, from uh, the genus Felis to other genera, you're going back further in uh, time. And so uh, when we look at how we classify uh, life, uh, we not only uh, classify them based on anatomical and genetic similarities, but this then reflects their fossil history. So uh, Earth has not always had carnivorous mammals, all right? While the dinosaurs were alive, it was the dinosaurs which were the major carnivores. Once the dinosaurs became extinct, uh, Earth did still, still did not have cats, dogs, and bears. Instead, other 
animals like such as marsupials, the creodonts, the mesonychians. Uh, once carnivores evolved um, in uh, the Eocene, uh, they were primitive forms, uh, not like the ones today. And then the order carnivora split into two suborders, and from the suborders, then we slowly uh, uh, saw uh, the modern uh, families and subfamilies and genera evolving uh, over uh, time. 